World Meteorological Organization Day, the 23rd March. Uh, I'm being given the topic basics of different weather elements and their observation techniques. So World Meteorological Organization, that is WMO, the World Meteorological Organization was established on 23rd March 1950. An organization was set up. And every year, this day is celebrated on the white platform throughout the world as WMO Day. Each year, WMO gives a theme for focusing on the object. This year, the theme is early warning and early action. On this day, all meteorological offices remained open for the common public, students, researchers, etc showcasing their various types of instruments being used by keeping the instruments and displaying posters, etc. Staff and officers on this day, apart from their normal duties, are engaged in explaining the models and charts and answering to the questions of the audiences attending the exhibition. Seminars, talk shows and meteorological films are arranged to celebrate this day. So today we are celebrating the WMO day and various uh, students and uh, Research scholars have visited the various departments. So I continue with my topic now. Wishing you all the best and happy WMO day. Uh, the basic elements of weather. Actually, weather is composed of different elements and the way they interact with each other create different atmospheric conditions or the weather events. There are basically eight uh, primary elements which drive all the weather. They are wind, uh, which is a uh, vector quantity having a directional speed, then precipitation, temperature, humidity, visibility, clouds, sunshine, atmospheric pressure. So these are the basic elements uh, which are affecting your weather. So before going uh, in deep uh, regarding the procedure and techniques of the observation, let us have a basic idea behind it. Now uh, that though the wind is uh, blowing, precipitation is occurring, this is a visibility and clouds are forming. So what are the basic driving factors which are being creating this type of uh, elements? That is the source. So the basic of this is the temperature. That is the temperature is the main uh, uh, thing which is uh, driving all the weather elements. The source of heat. The sun is the ultimate source of heat and a differential heat received from the sun by different regions of the earth is the ultimate reason behind all the climatic features. So understanding the pattern of distribution of the temperature in different seasons is important for understanding various climatic features such as wind, pressure system, precipitation, etc. Regarding horizontal distribution of temperature, the distribution of temperature across the latitude over the Earth's surface is known as the horizontal distribution of temperatures. The horizontal distribution of temperature on the Earth is shown by isotherms. What are isotherms? Isotherms are the line joining the points that have an equal temperature. And when we draw the isotherm map and being analyzed, it has been seen that the distribution of temperature is uneven, which is the main cause, of course, cause regarding the uh, uh, change of the weather elements. So weather uh, elements are being changed due to the uh, uh, uneven distribution of temperature. So what are the factors affecting temperature distribution? Some of the factors affecting the temperature distributions are the angle of incidence or the angle of sun's rays, the duration of sunshine, transparency of atmosphere, Differential heating of land and water, prevailing winds, ocean currents, altitude, and Earth's distance from the sun. So these are other parameters which are affecting the temperature distribution. So angle of incidence is depending on the location of the space, uh, that is the place uh, where it is located and the uh, location of the place that the uh, sun's angle of incidence, the light which is coming, it depends. Duration of sunshine, how much uh, sunshine is being received at that place depends. Transparency of atmosphere is related concerned with the aerosols and uh, turbidity, the storm, sandstorm or how much the weather is clear. Depending on that, the amount of temperature distribution depends. Differential heating of land and water, uh, say uh, land is having 
uh, what albedo of the land is much more as compared to the water, especially in the polar areas where the 70 to 90 percent of the uh, sun's rays have been uh, reflected back. And, uh, and then the water takes a little bit much more time to get it uh, heated. So differential heating of land and water also creating the difference in the temperature and uh, climatic features. Prevailing winds, winds which are blowing the latitudes, they transfer the temperatures throughout the latitudes. Similarly, the ocean currents also transmit the temperatures and the variation is being seen. Regarding altitude also, as we go up the place, the temperature is also again uh, changing as we go up the temperature decreases and the last feature is earth distance from the sun as the position of the earth from the sun depends on temperature received at that particular place so a little basic we'll go about it uh, inside uh, after that i will cover the um, elements which we are observing at the instrument that are observatory so latitude and longitude are the coordinate system by which position or the location of any place on the earth's surface can be determined and described. Latitude is a measurement of distance of north and south, north or south of the equator. If it is measured in 180 degrees, imagine when there is 180 imaginary lines that form circles around the east west parallel to the equators. They are the lines. Equator is an imaginary line. The value of the equator latitude is zero and the latitudes of the poles are 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south. So here in the figure, you could see the relative position. At, this is a point of interest. This is the position. So from the core of the Earth, whatever the angle subtended here is the particular parallel uh, line of that latitude. Suppose this is the angle, then this will be the line of latitude. That is the parallel latitude. And for longitude, it is a vertical cross section. So for longitude, it is a horizontal displacement from east to west, how much it is moving. Longitude is a measurement of location of east or west of the prime meridian at Greenwich. The specially designated imaginary north-south line that passes through both geographic poles, Greenwich London. The Greenwich land, uh, line which passes through London has been assigned imaginary zero degree longitude. The meridians of longitude passing through Greenwich Observatory near London has been adopted as prime meridian and its value is zero. The longitude place of the angular distance east or west of the prime meridian. So from the east side or the west side of the prime, this is the prime meridian. From the east side or west side, if you are moving, it gives the, uh, whether you are moving towards the east or west, it is clear from that. And uh, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees are the uh, meridians, which are parallel to the green wish. The vertical lines running from north, south, joining two poles. North and South Poles, the vertical lines which are joining, they are called as meridians or longitude. They are spaced farthest apart at the equator. Near equator, you will see they are spaced farthest apart and converge at the poles. Importance of parallel meridians. What is the importance for uh, parallels and meridians? The combination of meridians of longitude and parallels of latitude establishes a framework or grid by means of which exact position can be determined in reference to prime meridian and the equator. For example, 40 degree north and 30 degree west is the location, then it is a 40 degree arc of north of the equator and 30 degree arc west of Greenwich meridian. Here the, our earth is the south pole, north pole, these are the, this red line is the prime meridian and these are the latitudes, basic first latitude the equator is zero. Beyond that, uh, 23.26 is the Tropic of Cancer. At 66 degrees, uh, there's an Arctic Circle, and beneath Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic Circle, southwards. So these uh, rest of the parameters which we are discussing about the uh, the climatic features and the temperature, pressure, this uh, winds changing due to the rotation, revolution of the Earth also. What we are observing in the meteorological observatory is the reading of the instruments and uh, taking the note of it. But why it is happening, the reason behind it is that I am a little bit explaining. So rotation and revolution of Earth. The Earth has two types of motion, we are very much uh, known, namely the rotation and the revolution. Rotation is the movement of the Earth on its own axis. The movement of the Earth around the Sun in a fixed path or orbit is called as a revolution. 
the axis of the earth which is an imaginary line makes an angle of 66.5 degree with the orbital plane of the earth so in the figure you could see the axis of line which is 23 and half this is a equator this is the normal and this is a tilted axis of the earth which is subtending 23 and half degree uh, angle and 66 and half degree here total 90 degree component is divided into two the portion of the earth facing the sun here in the next figure you could see earth is rotating this is a tilted axis north pole south pole this is sun this is a circle of illumination the portion of the earth facing the sun would always experience the day and thus bringing continuous warmth to this region that's why temperature will be much more at this side the other half would remain in the darkness this side would remain in the darkness and freezing cold at all the time life would not have been possible in such extreme condition uh, let us consider if, it, if earth is not been moving then the life is uh, not possible because you are totally uh, warm till within and here totally uh, what you call the very freezing cold temperature with the chances of existing of any life is not possible that's why the mother earth is rotating and we are still alive the circle that divides the day from night on the globe is called a circle of illumination the earth takes about 24 hours to complete one rotation and that is called as earth day it's important to note that rotation creates a diagonal circle of cycle of light and darkness temperature and humidity changes your rotation causes a tides twice daily rise and fall of sea level it's because of rotation the things are happening tides are the result of both gravity of the moon and the gravity of the sun tides are highest when the earth sun and moon are on straight line rotation causes deflection of oceans and air currents due to the force named as Coriolis force this is the force which generates the winds so due to rotation of earth the deflection of the ocean and the air currents due to the force named as Coriolis force is been happening this causes a large deflection in the direction of winds and also causes large rotation of pools of water in the oceans called as gyre it's a bhavre hote samandra mein bade bade that's uh, that's the thing we are getting in ocean as gyres as well as in uh, air we are getting the uh, deflection causes the direction of the winds to change as due to the rotation of the earth similar to revolution because earth is simultaneously rotating as well as revolving also so earth spinning on its axis it also orbits along with its self movement it is also orbiting around the sun and that is called as revolution it takes around 365 and one fourth day uh, of the year to revolve around the sun and we consider in the round figure as 365 days the one fourth part is kept aside and uh, the fourth uh, after that 24 hours a span of four years we add it as a one day on the february which is a calendar of 28 but that a month after four years is a day of 29 days so that year is called as a leap year the gravitational pull of sun keeps the earth and other planets in the orbit around the star earth's orbit around the sun is an elliptical orbit and sometimes earth moves further away from the sun and sometimes it comes closest to the sun since so being the elliptical the closest earth gets the sun each year is called as perihelion it's around 47 million kilometer on about 3rd of january and farthest is called as aphelion it is 152 million kilometer across on july 4th the reason of the earth or any planet has a season is that the earth is tilted 23 and half on its axis it is because of tilting of the earth on its axis we are getting different type of seasons revolution along the earth tilted axis leads to changing season across the hemispheres also because of revolution winds and the sea flow redirect to one side in northern hemisphere and to one side in the southern hemisphere because of revolution the uh, winds and the sea flow directs in the northern hemisphere at one side and southern hemisphere on the other side another feature is summer solstice there is on 21st June, northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. The rays of the sun fall directly on the topic of cancer. As a result, these areas receive more heat. The areas near the pole receive less heat as compared to the topic of cancer as the sun's rays are slanting. The north pole is inclined towards the sun and places beyond the arctic circle 
experience continuous daylight for about six months. Since a large portion of the northern hemisphere is getting light from the sun, it is summer there naturally. The longest day and the shortest night at this place occur on 21st June. At this time, southern hemisphere, all the conditions are just reverse. The nights are longer than days. This position of earth is called as summer solstice. This has been known to all, most of the thing, but uh, my um, thing is to get it highlighted because only reading the parameters and noting the things, but why these are happening, the reason behind it is small geographical reasons that I want to elaborate. So winter solstice on 22nd December, the Tropic of Capricorn, the southern, uh, southern hemisphere, receives direct heat and uh, the sun at the south pole tilts toward it. Since the tilted axis towards the south pole is tilted towards the sun, it is seeing the Tropic of Capricorn receives much more sunlight. As the sun rays fall vertically in the Tropic of Capricorn, a larger portion of southern hemisphere gets lighted. Therefore, it is summer in the southern hemisphere, whereas uh, winter in the northern hemisphere that time. Thus the reverse, vice versa. This position of the earth is called as winter solstice. Now another feature is equinox. So on 21st March and September 23rd, direct rays of the sun fall on the equator. At this position, neither of the poles is tilted towards the sun. So the whole earth experiences equal days and equal nights. This is called as equinox, equal duration of night and day. On 23rd September, it is autumn season in the northern hemisphere, whereas spring season in the southern hemisphere. The same is opposite for the 21st March. So the reason behind is that equinox, summer solstice and uh, winter solstice, the tilting of earth have a different type of distribution of temperatures, thereby resulting the creation of uh, temperature differences and the other elements being affected by that. Otherwise, also due to revolution rotation of the earth, the seasons have been changing the movement of air and uh, sea uh, currents are being changing this is because of that and they are the parts and parcel of the elements of weather which are changing so last month is midnight sun this tilt also produces effects such as midnight sun this thing i have already experienced uh, during my stay at antarctica for one year recently i have been participated in 40th antarctica expedition where the sun never sets during some, some summer nights in very high altitude. The sun as seen in the Arctic or Antarctic, where the tilt of the earth axis relative to the plane of its orbit produces at least 124 period of daylight and one night of 24 hours. At the poles, both day at the poles, proper at the poles, south pole, at the poles, both day and south pole, north pole, at the poles, both day and night are theoretically six months long. However, their duration varies on descending the latitudes. That is, uh, when we are where Bharti, we have been experiencing two and a half months of night, 24 hours night, and about two, hour, uh, two months of total 24 hours a day during the summer season. But at the poles, it is totally six months long, that is day and six months night. But as we uh, change the latitude, the little bit difference is there. The effect of the tilt of the axis is seen in the lower latitudes. Similarly, polar ice, this is also creating uh, the temperature differential is also resulting from the, this month polar ice. The, the tilt of the earth results in the poles not receiving as much energy as the equator. It is clear that on equator the uh, maximum sunshine is getting, so maximum heat is there. But at the poles, it is at the farther end and since the earth axis is tilted at 23.5 degrees Celsius, the poles are not getting uh, that is, they are getting almost 40% of the energy that the equator gets. This 23.5 tilt is not stored indefinitely as it changes over the period of time. Both of these factors allow ice to build up year after year in high latitudes and creating massive ice sheets. On an average, in Antarctica, the, the surface has been covered by around 3 to 4 kilometer thick sheet of ice, whereas the sea surface, uh, that the sea uh, surface uh, near the Antarctica has been covered with a 1.5 meters sheet of ice sheet. This size has drastic effect on the earth climate system due to its high albedo among the other things because being the uh, uh, what you call albedo is very much higher whatever the sun rays are coming that too they are not strong since it has been inclined the sun rays uh, 
came to the surface and that they are not that way you know, warmer as compared to the Arctic weather because they fall directly. So they are not that way of much temperature and whatever the sunlight falling on the ice surface, the reflectivity is almost 70 to 90 percent of the sun rays have been reflected by the uh, ice surface. So keeping it maximum cold. Now coming, these are the basic uh, things which I want to discuss. And now we are shifting to our met elements, parameters, the wind. Wind is one of the parameters. Wind is defined as the air in motion or horizontal flow of air at point in any direction. Because wind always the air is always in motion and uh, wind has two dimensional vector quantity since it is uh, expressed in terms of magnitude as well as the direction. The movement of air is the main driving forces of the weather. The majority of the major and extreme weather events like cold front, warm fronts, clouds, thunderstorm are all driven by the winds. Winds make them move. Wind is a large scale movement of air from area of high pressure to low pressure in the atmosphere. The speed and the strength of the wind can be determined by the distance between the low pressure and high pressure areas uh, as well as the difference in the air pressure. The instrument to measure the wind speed is called as cup anemometer and the uh, instrument to measure the direction of the wind from which it is coming to your station is called as wind wind. In IMD we are using Mark II instrument. Uh, in metrology we are concerned with the wind coming to your station that is not going where it is going but we are concerned with the uh, wind motion of the wind that is wind coming to your station and that direction has to be noted in the 16 point of compass nearest to the 10 degrees in the clockwise circle from to north. So unit of wind is meter per second. In metrology, normally it is expressed in knots. Though we uh, calculate in meter per second or kilometer per hour, but when expressing in uh, weather codes or in synop messages or giving data to UTC or anywhere, we are mentioning the wind speed expressed in knots. Knots per nautical mile per hour. One kmbh is equivalent to 0.54 knots. This is a picture of wind vane, Mark II. Here you could see this counterweight and uh, this is a free, uh, this is all mechanical device really rotating from this axis here the ball bearings are there. This is the arm and this the spindle is there that is the counterweight and this has been followed by this flap which is balancing this one. This gives you the permanent that, that is the true direction from which the wind is coming towards station. Here wind wind, for example, this side, the wind wind is showing westerly direction. It is component westerly. So it is reported the code as 27. Actually, the circle, it is 360 degrees. So the westerly component is 270 degrees. But while reporting the codes, we uh, omit the uh, divided by 10, that is nearest to 10 degrees. The tens we take, so it is 27. A stage comes, uh, actually this uh, counterweight shows you the uh, wind coming to a station. A stage may come, the wind may be calm, that is there is no wind blowing. So the, uh, there is no such direction mentioned here for the calm winds. So it is possible that the uh, this lever may rest somewhere, but, but it doesn't indicate that uh, that time though the wind is calm you may report as westerly. Because you have to ensure from the cup anemometer whether it is not moving. If it is not moving at all, and if there is no rustling of leaves and all these things and you know uh, sensing the uh, winds on your face, it is very much clear that the winds are calm. So you may report that time the wind is calm. Another case is that if the, there is a cross uh, section of flow uh, or cross direction of flow and some uh, disturbance is there, there may be a chance that the wind may not be oscillating within a frame period. but. Uh, moving round and round or moving with more than 60 degrees. So that is called as a wind is said to be variable. So, so it is a balance of what we have already discussed. 16 point of compass is to be reported. It is installed on a lattice tower of mask of 10 meter high, which could be very much easily accessible and that it could be seen from the orbit observatory enclosure. And 16 point of compass are this one. This is north south, east, west, which are the binding direction fabricated on the wind wind, plus four uh, sub-directions, that is northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. 
In between that, these are already eight fabricated. In between them, already dotted lines are there, which are in between directions, which are meaning so total eight and eight, 16 point of compost, which the direction showing at particular point of the observation, it is to be noted and reported. The instructor to measure the speed is called as cup anemometer. So wind is said to be calm when the wind is zero if cup anemometer is not revolving. Similarly, uh, I already mentioned wind is said to be variable if uh, it is not uh, stable or not in a uh, what you call uh, rotating in a cyclic or anticyclic motion, not stable, not in a uh, systematic way, but then it is said to be variable and reported as VRB. In quotes, we report it as variable wind as 99. Uh, this cup anemometer consists of already three or four semi-conical cups attached to a central spider. As the force on the concave side is uh, due to the wind is greater than the convex side, the cup will rotate. The cup anemometer revolves only in one direction. Because the construction is like that, every time they are 60 degrees apart and they at whatever the direction the wind is coming, it is forcing the, the thrust is forcing the convex side, uh, concave side much more and start rotating. Once it starts rotating, the it takes a speed according to the flow of the air. It is a pure mechanical device. It is seen like this. This is a cup anemometer with the three spherical shapes. This side is concave, other side is convex. So the surface, uh, that is a volume, is surface volume is much more this side. Suppose a breeze is coming from this side, it will put a thrust on this and it will start rotating. Next time when this particle move, this uh, cup moves here, another cup takes its position. So wind, if it's in the same direction, it will start moving like this. If wind course change karta hai, to koi na koi cup jo hai, ek taraf face karega wind ko, it start moving. But it will always rotate in a clockwise direction, asa nahi ki dousre direction se pohna shuru hai. Or iske, uh, this is having a bomb and gear method. With this rotating, it has been shaft is connected to the bomb and gear. And it is a simple odometer which we are having in our vehicles. Just like we are having in our vehicles, we see how many kilometers we have traveled. Similarly, the same kilometer uh, uh, this uh, meter is here. So the first reading of anemometer is to be noted, whatever it is. It is of six digit. Last digit is in red color. That is the tenth decimal. Ye saat, aat, nao, dus, jo hoga, to chhe ka saat hoga. Just like our vehicle. And the second reading of anemometer is to be taken after three minutes, observing the wind for three minutes, the direction to direction, and the taking the note of the three minutes difference, we come to know about the speed. So calculation of wind speed is, let us take an example, uh, second reading of anemometer minus first reading of anemometer, the difference is of 0.5 kilometers only. And this difference is of for only three minutes. So we have to amplify for kilometers per hour. So we want to make it hour, multiplying both sides by 20. 3 into 20, 60 minutes, one hour. Similarly, 0.5 kilometers into 20 is 10 kilometers per hour. So we are now able to know that wind is blowing at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Converting the wind speed in knots, as we already seen, one kmph is equal to 0.54 knots. It's almost half of it. So 10 into 0.54 is 0 0.5 knots. So approximately it is not exactly half, some of the times. It is exactly, but most of the time it is approximately half. So another parameter is precipitation. So precipitation is in the form, uh, precipitation is water in the form of different states, which is formed after condensation, turn water vapor into solid form, which falls on the ground after it's become too heavy or suspended in air. Precipitation can take a form of rain, snow or hell. Precipitation is primarily the result of evaporation and condensation. The basic rule is that water is made of water, the water is made of water, and the clouds are formed. The water is made of water, the go upwards, the temperature falls and the vapor condenses and uh, clouds are made of water. And if more, if dew point at that time, the, this condenses and if more it is then cool, so then we get the form of rainfall. The instrument for measuring rainfall is called as a rain gauge. Amount of what uh, amount of precipitation is measured in millimeters. It's a uh, one thing to be noted that uh, every liquid which we are measuring is in the form of liters or milliliters. Milk we are measuring liters, milliliters like that, petrol liter, milliliters. But why not the precipitation which is being collected at our observatory as liters? But we take it as millimeters because 
as we are concerned with the depth of the water which would cover the horizontal portion of the surface of the earth if there was no percolation of water or there is no loss of water at all so kitni bhumi jo hai wo pani ke grip mein aayi hui hai uska height se hum pata lagta hai kitna amount of volume of rainfall wahan pe hua so that's why it has been measured in the height of the column of water which is uh, already occurred as a form of precipitation so this is a uh, outline diagram of rain gauge so this rain gauge is actually uh, there are two types of rain gauges one is called as org this is ordinary rain gauge and another one is self recording rain gauge that is called as srrg so ordinary rain gauge is having uh, it, it is uh, having some masonry work by 60 cm by 60 cm by 60 cm the pit is being made height width and depth and uh, in, inside it uh, beneath the ground when this uh, receiver uh, approx 4 liter is kept and above the ground little bit above uh, the collector is been put and in this collector one funnel is attached so whatever the rainfall is uh, coming it is getting accumulated and through this funnel it is accumulated in this receiver and isme jo hai rain gauge mein do type ke hai jo upper diameter hai circle ka gun metal ka hota hai ya for reinforced fabric fiber ka hota hai made of and this is having a diameter of 200 square centimeter area and 100 square centimeter area so that area depends and for that volume of water which is collected and in this uh, area accordingly that volume is converted into a 20 mm that the measuring cylinder ek banaya jata hai uske anupat mein and that is being used to measure the rainfall the method to denote the actual reading of the rainfall is the best method is to take the reading at the, your eye level and water since having the uh, density is low as compared to mercury it takes always concave shape jabki mercury jo hai convex shape leta hai so we have to take the load of meniscus of it so you have to lower your eyes or uh, make the uh, measuring cylinder at your eye level this is the correct reading which is indicating 5.6 each division is of 0.2 ml so 5.24 and 6 is the actual one but if you see from above it will give a parallax and it will give a wrong reading of 5.8 else wise if you are uh, seeing like this from the bottom And if you are seeing on the tilted side, you will may receive a wrong reading of 5.4 millimeter. So it is necessary that at the eye level you should take it. And this is called as self-recording rain gauge, which I mentioned earlier. So this is called as autographic instrument. Actually, this is an autographic instrument. Basically, with the uh, regular instrument, a few autographic instruments are also being uh, installed in the observatory. for the sake of giving uh, getting the real time data printed on the graph paper because in observatory we in, we as a meteorologist we usually take hourly or three hourly observations so in between what are the temperature or pressure or what is the humidity if we want someone want to know or we want to have a climatic data so that data is uh, well printed and kept stored this chart um, uh, through the pen and uh, this type of instrument are called as autographic here the basic principle is the uh, that uh, every autographic instrument is having the clock drum pen attached to it and that pen giving the deflection or markings on the graph paper which is being noted and kept as a record the only thing whatever is changing is a sensor so here in rain gauge you would see it, there is a float chamber this is a float chamber this is the uh, what is called the collector and this collector is actually mounted on this to show you this one we have to take it out whatever the water is getting collected it goes through the funnel to this pipe and this is a flow chamber the flow chamber mein jaake pani jama ho jata hai aur iska jo capacity hai wo 10 ml ka hai 10 ml accordingly the graph paper has been calibrated for 10 ml and jaise hi 10 ml ka pani isme jama ho jata hai it has a small, yeah, from this glass piece you could see there is a inverted one inverted tube uh, inverted at the actual angle so whatever the water amount uh, is getting deposited yahan pe jitna bhi pani jaise jama hote jata hai full galle tak aa jata hai then there is a chance if water is still bit coming the pani thoda sa dhakela jata hai aur yahan se water starting oozing out in the inverted tube and that creates a due to the saturation that creates a vacuum 
और ये पानी साइफन हो जाता है सो दिस गेट्स द साइफन होने से ये पूरा चेंबर खाली हो जाता है सो वॉट एवर द पेन गोज अप जैसे आपका पानी भरता है तो फ्लोट ऊपर आता है फ्लोट ऊपर आता है तो पेन जिसमें अटैच किया हुआ है इट गिव अ मार्किंग ऑफ द क्राफ्ट पेपर एंड फ्रॉम दैट यू कम टू नो अमाउंट ऑफ प्रसिपिटेशन ऑफ करीब ये क्राफ्ट पेपर में अकॉर्डिंग टू द मैग्नीट्यूड दैट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रसिपिटेशन सामने में टाइम मार्क्स टाइम स्केल भी दिया हुआ है सो यू कैन मेक आउट फ्रॉम ड्यूरिंग व्हाट इंटरवल व्हाट वाज द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रसिपिटेशन रिकॉर्डेड सो दिस टाइप ऑफ थिंग आर यूज्ड फॉर गेटिंग रियल टाइम डाटा जैसे टेंपरेचर के थर्मोग्राफ है ह्यूमिडिटी के लिए हाइग्रोग्राफ है टेंपरेचर में एक सेंसर होता है बायोमेट्रिक स्लिप यूज करते हैं जिस इज कॉल्ड जिसके कोफिशियंट ऑफ एक्सपेंशन के डिफरेंस से वी गेट द डिफ्लेक्शंस ऑन द ग्राफ पेपर दैट इज बीइंग एम्पलीट्यूड बाय द कैड एंड कैम इन द इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड वी गेट द डिफ्लेक्शंस एंड ऑन द ग्राफ पेपर सो टेंपरेचर का थर्मोग्राफ है द टू एलिमेंट्स व्हिच आर बीइंग यूज्ड एज एन अलॉय दैट इज हेलिकल स्प्रिंग इज बीइंग मेड इट्स अ वन मेटल इज इनवर एंड अनदर वन इज ब्रॉन्ज for humidity uh, the principal uh, recorder and all the thing is same the sensor is the human hair brown hair previously were used they have closed now and horse hair they been used but due to peta they they have also stopped now human hairs with a long 20 hairs strand is being tied on one end of the instrument and another uh, what you call end is being connected to the rod which is connected to the pen so uh, hairs are said to be very much sensitive to the humidity so as humidity is Uh, more the hair rate expands so as the it expands the deficiency is very uh, meager you can't see with the naked eyes but the due to cad and cam of this instrument it is getting amplified and the same movement has been deflected to pain on the graph paper so you come to know the humidity changes and the temperature changes on the graph paper so ye autographic instrument saath mein iske liye iska ijad hua so temperature what is the temperature actually the degree of hotness or coldness of a body is known as temperature we have already seen that in metrology we used we measure the temperature of air soil and water bodies also the scale typically used to measure the temperature is celsius fahrenheit and kelvin basically nowadays it is celsius is commonly used the instrument used to measure the temperature is called as thermometer inside the thermometer for measuring the temperature the sensors are mercury and a spirit or alcohol in the last thermometers uh, we are it has been used for uh, measuring the temperature in meteorological departments so this is called as stevenson screen the figure left side you could see the stevenson screen uh, it has been designed and developed by uh, that is the idea behind is that for, for sir stevenson and according to his name the name has been given as stevenson screen it is a rectangular wooden box with dimension of 56 cm length width is 30 cm and height is 40 cm double roof side this is double roof this is a wooden box already it has one roof here other than one slanting roof is at the above so it is a double roof side lowered providing free movement of air to the thermometer bulb this side you could see there is a gap in between it is just like a hut shape hut shape like this every plate is mounted on this so that Uh, uh the free circulation of the air mass is being maintained inside the box had it been kept a wooden box without any just like a wooden box if we would have kept and the thermometer had been placed then we will get the temperature surely but that for that mass of air which is enclosed in that wooden box and not the air passer so we are concerned with the air temperature but we can't uh, what you call tie the thermometers directly exposed to the atmosphere so it has to be protected so it has to be kept in this stevenson screen where the air circulation is well maintained and the temperatures are not affected so the, the idea behind a double roof is that it is already been a double uh, single roof here and upper side if the sun is scorchy and on the mid uh, mid day uh, the direct heat of the sun won't impact the temperature much more because the, the air here uh, what you call the air space between the double roof and the white painting prevents the direct heating of the intensity of the sunlight since uh, basically wood and uh, wood is the bad conductor of heat further white color is reflecting the excess heat so whatever the errors would like to come we have minimized the basic stevenson screen is uh, uh, what you call based on the four supports at 1.22 meters height above the ground approximately 4 feet 
setup of the screen is such that the door facing the north side in northern hemisphere so that the minimum sunlight would uh, either it is prevented so that uh, sunlight should not directly fall on your temperature uh, thermometers it is uh, made such that the door will always open to the opposite side of the sun the use of the screen is to protect the thermometers from direct heating from ground ground se bhi jo hai long wave radiation hota hai earth ka so it is not impacted if it could expose directly ahead so it would impact that one so that's why it is kept inside Directly heating for the ground and the neighboring objects and losing heat by radiation at night. Further, it has to be protected from rain, snow, and a low free circulation. So this is Stevenson screen. Inside the Stevenson screen, the position is like that. Vertically, we have two thermometers, dry bulb and a wet bulb, and horizontally we have two one that is a maximum and a minimum. So by the name itself, it is self-explanatory. This thermometer is supposed to give you the maximum temperature. whereas the this temperature thermometer gives you the minimum temperature of the day attended dry bulb is the sample of ma, uh, that parcel of air which is at that moment the temperature is given by this and wet bulb thermometer is the concept is that the dry bulb and the wet bulb thermometers basically are the same thermometers only thing what is done about this bottle one small bottle uh, besides the bulb is been kept with water filled with water and a bulb of this wet bulb with a 3 cm of circle of muslin cloth is being wound on the bulb and four strands by putting a knot the strands loose strands were put in the bottle by keeping it always moist due to capillary action the water from the bottle goes and keep the bulb always wet so it gives you the wet uh, uh, dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature from the both the uh, conjunction of that we get the dew point temperature and humidity so from this we come to know how much the air is saturated in garmi ke samay jo hai hawa mein nami kam rahegi to zyada evaporation hoga thanda hoga ye to there will be difference much more in the dry bulb or the wet bulb as compared in the monsoon season or prior to that monsoon mein ab humidity zyada rahegi to zyada rehne se us mein jo hai evaporation kam hoga yahan pe aur uska difference jo hai temperature ka kam rahega so maybe in the case of monsoon dry bulb and wet bulb are some of the times at uh, near to equal but uh, wet bulb can't more than the dry bulb so the basic method to read the thermometer is also we have some decorum for that that if you are measuring the thermometer from the uh, stimulus screen you have to see the convex surface that is a convex uh, whereas in rainfall we have to take the concave that is a lower meniscus here we have to take the consideration of upper meniscus so again the same stage you have to see at a eye level you have to either uh, make yourself up or uh, if you are hydrated get yourself down to the level of the convex surface of the mercury in the column and note the reading whatever the reading that is is the correct one and if you take it from the upside or lower side it may uh, involve a chance of error So, so one thing is uh, again uh, for this temperatures uh, maximum minimum dry bulb uh, and wet bulb thermometers all these thermometers readings are noted at every 3 hourly observations and out of this 3 hourly observations the totally uh, total time running observatory is having 8 observations 24 hours divided by 3 that is 8 observations are being taken out of that 3 to gmt and 12 gmt that is uh, local time uh, is 3 gmt means local time is 8 30 hours in india we Take the GMT add up plus 5 30 hours to that Kolkata uh, or Delhi time. So that time we are supposed setting the thermometers maximum and minimum in the morning, whereas minimum thermometer at the evening only. As the minimum is likely to supposed to come in the next morning, and morning uh, maximum minimum maximum hours for the day to come maximum is set to reach. So we have to set the thermometers. Setting is nothing but making a reference point at par with the travel. So Uh, maximum to set the construction is like that uh, it has a long narrow capillary tube through which the mercury could expand with the temperature and go ahead but won't come back of its own so agar aapne maximum ko disturb nahi kiya hai the day if you have not set the thermometer it will remain it will show the temperature as it is till the next morning unless and until you disturb it so uh, isme uh, the next day morning you have to take out the thermometer briskly shake the thermometers At 45 degree elevation above and 30 degree below, this is twice or thrice, so that by thrust, uh, putting the thrust, the mercury on the other side is forced back to the bulb, and you get the 
reading at par with the drive width that is called as reference reading similarly for minimum you have to just uh, similarly for minimum you have to just tilt the two ends of this have been clamped you have to take one of the end and just tilt it so that the glass index and the mercury comes to the further end and that is uh, showing at par with the temperature drive width so that is called as setting to get it ready for the days maximum or minimum to come and get recorded So to hear from uh, just I tell you like this from driver uh, we have a very regular table because every time we put uh, values in the calculation and um, because we have uh, very less time ten minutes for the observation then uh, five minutes three to four minutes for preparation of the message and we are just to be delivered seven you know, seven eight minutes so every time putting the values and taking out the um, uh, what you call humidity dew point by calculation is troublesome and also it may happen a chance to compromise with the accuracy. So, a ready reckoner table already been given by the department. We have to just correlate the driver temperature from the vertical side and uh, uh, what you call the wet bulb temperature on the horizontal side, and uh, they are uh, kept apart of 0.2 degrees Celsius. So, if they are odd one, we have to interpolate, or else if it is an even, for example, here it is given 28.8 is a driver, whereas 21.2 is a wet bulb. So, 21.2 and 28.8 we have to uh, see where it intersection is coming. So this figure is 17.2. This is your dew point temperature. Similarly, the case here, here coming down driver temperature, wet bulb temperature, the humidity is 50%. So in this way, the dew point and arch is being calculated. So what is the dew point temperature actually? The dew point temperature may be defined as the temperature to which a sample of moist air has to be cooled at constant pressure to become it saturated. If the temperature of the area is cooled below the dew point, condensation will occur. Relative humidity is the ratio of mass of water vapor actually present in a unit volume of air to that required to saturate at the same temperature. So, RH is expressed in the uh, uh, way of percentage and the instrument to measure the humidity is hygrometer. So another factor in the observatory to visibility is the visibility. So visibility is, is a non-instrumental observation. So there is some decorum in the observatory to maintain the, uh, so there are various elements to uh, take the readings, some decorum is maintained and the order of observation is there. So order of observation is that, uh, first you have to go to the, visit the observatory, take a note of wind direction, at the same time take the uh, first rating of the anemometer, then you have to go to see if there is any rain, uh, um, what you call in the uh, rain gauge. And if it is not, then it's okay. If it is, then you have to measure with the measuring cylinder how much rain has been accumulated. After that, you have to come to Stevenson screen, take a note of all the thermometer readings, driver, wet bulb, maximum, minimum. Then set the maximum, minimum, whatever, depending upon the time, 3 and 2 GMT, only the thermometers are being set. Rest of the time, only the reading is being taken. And after that, non-instrumental part comes where in th within three to four minutes, you have to assess the visibility and uh, what you call the cloud formation, which are the type of clouds and the weather which is existing. The first, first step in estimating visibility is to choose some prominent objects. These are called as landmarks. So minarets, towers, factory chimney like objects can serve as good landmarks for shorter distance. But for longer distance, large objects like hill, large buildings, water tanks would be better. So every observatory has been given some landmarks by the public works department for, through which we are coming to know the direction in which it is situated and the, uh, what you call the distance also. So every, if the horizontal visibility is not same in the direction, so suppose in the observatory is given two or three landmarks, they may differ from observatory to observatory. And uh, from that you come to know, you have to see the available landmarks given to your observatory and see the uh, what you call the landmarks which are best seen. So uh, here for example it is given uh, this is an observatory where 500 meters one uh, some temple is there at uh, 2000 meter one factory is there at uh, southeastern direction one hillock is there that is of 10,000 uh, meters that is 10 kilometers uh, one water tank at 1000 meters like this so and so on. So according to this uh, meter range we have course so this is 97, 95, 93, 96, 94. So in meteorology, for visibility concern, we are supposed to report the lowest 
visibility, the spectrum which is having the lowest visibility. Enabling that, that much amount of visibility is present in the every sector. That is for the safety of the concerns. So the lowest visibility has to be reported. Similarly, cloud, after observing visibility at the, the particular landmass, the low visibility is being reported or noted with the observer in the pocket register. Similarly, clouds. Cloud is a visible uh, aggregate of minute particles of water or ice or both in the air. Clouds are the important part of the water cycle. We are very much uh, know the fact that heat from the sun evaporates the water, moisture at the ground, and water vapor is formed, it rises, the water vapor continues to rise in the atmosphere, it cools as it goes up and reaches a point where the atmosphere where the temperature is low enough for condensation. That is known as dew point. The water vapor condenses around the particulate in the atmosphere, turn into water droplets, small droplets, and ice crystals at high altitude. Lower altitude may water droplets will be shown at a high altitude may ice crystals only. This tiny droplets may become longer as two drop collides. Dheere dheere chota chota drop jama hoke drop tayar ho jata hai aur it is visible. That is uh, small small uh, drops which it condenses get the visual form of the cloud. Instrument for measuring the clouds, the advanced instruments meteorologists used to study the clouds in detail are the weather satellites and radars. Satellites and radar images are able to accurately measure the cloud density, the amount of moisture, temperature and the movement of the clouds. Broadly, cloud has been classified into two types, one according to the height and uh, according to the type. So Luke Howard, who was a scientist who first developed the cl first cloud classification and developed in 18 1802. According to the altitude, that is the according to the height, the cloud has been assigned as low cloud, medium cloud, and high clouds. And according to the genre, that is the specific for low clouds, we have stratus, stratocumulus, cumulus, cumulonimbus. For middle cloud, nimbostratus, altostratus, altocumulus. For high clouds, we have cirrostratus, cirrus, and cirrocumulus. The cloud height is little bit differing according to the region. We in India belong to tropical region, so uh, in temperate region and polar regions, the polar region, the height of the clouds are a little bit less, the formation of the cloud as a lower as compared to the tropical region. And for low clouds, it is commonly constant, it is uh, getting and uh, developing the troposphere itself, it is from 0 to 2 kilometers only, the range, maximum low clouds are being formed within the range of 2 kilometers, that is about 6,500 feet. The forms of cloud, just like uh, mentioned, according to the height, we are uh, knowing it. According to the type, also we are knowing it. That cumuliform, stratiform, and seriform. So cumuliform are the puffy clouds and uh, heaped clouds appearing. They are convective clouds, which are being have, having amount of good amount of moisture and intense setting is there. They start developing. They are generally having a flat base with a curly, uh, what you call it, or uh, look like a cauliflower, have a definite shape. Whereas stratiform clouds are the uh, irregular shape, they are not having some basic uh, fixed shape like that, they don't have a fixed base and they can develop as its own, they can develop from cumulus or uh, they may be with the base of cumulus or maybe at different heights also. And another form of uh, stratiform cloud is of the sheet type, so they are having sheet like structure, when you in the monsoon you could see the outer status cloud widely covering the sky giving a good amount of continuous rainfall, they are the strato, uh, strato, uh, what they call Altopsetus cloud, whereas Nimbostratus is a uh, middle cloud but descends to the type of low cloud. It is a little bit grayish, and uh, prior to the monsoon or if the sky heat dissipates, that time you are able to see the Nimbostratus cloud. It's why they are rarely seen. Uh, they are sheet-like structures, stratiform cloud. Cumuliform are heap-like structures, whereas ciriform are wispy and fibrous type. They are the totally high clouds, which are at uh, 7,000 meters an hour. So there are strong jet streams and they and small ice the super cooling is there. They are all made of ice crystals only, small ice crystals. So these are the figures just to show you. Actually, the uh, part is quite vast. I have tried to accommodate it with a small span. So these are the cumulus cloud, still zero to two kilometer, two kilometers. These are the cumulus cloud having the little bit flash bases with a cauliflower like shape. This is middle. This is a cumulus family only, but this is a low cloud, this is a low cloud, this is a medium cloud, this is high cloud. So medium cloud, if you see, 
for as we go up that is from bottom to up the size of the cloud considerably reduce it is what uh, uh, you sure that due to the distance also it is uh, resembling that end, but also at the uh, what you call due to the wind shear and all these things a strong west uh, strong jet, jet streams are on this uh, having uh, what you call uh, not vertical extent is giving then but they spread horizontally so zero cumulus are fine ice crystals pebble like structures and patches they are whereas alto cumulus uh, is a hip uh, like this in patches it just resembles as if the farmer has tilled his land and looks uh, how the lumps of the soil are seen the same thing you could see on the sky so these are from cumulus family uh, these are from stratus family there is study from clouds stratus is the lowest form of cloud which is the lowest form developed uh, at the uh, what you call uh, height of the uh, as compared to the other clouds the lowest cloud and uh, its height is about uh, 100 meters 120 meters it start formation and mostly this type of cloud is being seen in the Lonavala and Mahabaleshwar hill station you see this type of clouds and these are also called as passing clouds as they pass it on as they uh, obstruct your visibility for a short time and later on pass it and you get the weather very much clear you can enjoy the uh, moving in this cloud with a slight drizzle uh, type of rain it gives stratocumulus is a little bit higher side uh, of the low cloud uh, than stratus so it is a static form having a regular shape alto stratus is a medium cloud with a sheet like structure widely spread it has also two types sometimes it is opaque from through which you can see the blue sky or some other times it is uh, hiding the sun or the moon you can see only the outline of the sun or moon but you can't say uh, uh, feel them so that type of cloud is alto stratus whereas zero stratus is a high type of cloud is a thin well of cloud uh, is a thin, uh, halki si hai, se aapko sky bhi ghi, ya thoda gera hoga to you can see a sun halo. This type of feature is associated with the zero status cloud. So you could see this type of cloud differentiation. And another precipitate form of clouds are this one, low status, which is I have already mentioned is a medium type of cloud, but descends down to a slight grayish in color, full of uh, moisture, and it gives a good amount of rainfall. Whereas cumulonimbus is a convective type of low cloud. This is the low cloud which has the capacity to extend up to the height of the almost uh, high cloud. So initially the cell of CU is there, then it, if enough moisture and heating is there, it develops into a towering CU. And later if uh, uh, turbulence process is going on and if it is going to mature stage, a huge cumulonimbus form of cloud is being developed, which is very much hazardous as the point of aviation. Since lightning, thunderstorm, and hailstorm are associated with this type of cloud only. This type of cloud is having a base of 2 to 3 kilometers and it gives a good amount of rain, shower rain precipitation with thunder and lightning. Uh, and some of the times, hailstorm is also being accompanied with it. And these are the last high cloud cirrus, which is a fibrous structure or wispy type. This is called a hook cirrus. The usually seen on the high cloud at the top of the sky. This is one and all schematic diagram of the cloud, just at a glance, you could see the, these are the nimbostratus cloud, this is almost about to medium cloud, but this is down a little bit, this is stratus, stratocumulus, cumulus is puffy like structure, hip like that. And out of this, this is developed, from this, the CB is developed, this is a cumulus cloud, this is a basically low cloud associated with showery precipitation, lightning, thunder, and rises to the reach to, to the highest cloud, that is high cloud. And here you see the strong gestures are there and the top has been disturbed. And this is this shape is called as annual top. Here zero status with the hello, cirrus with the hook type, fibrous wispy like uh, clouds are seen. Alto cumulus already I mentioned and this is alto status, dense alto status. So these are the schematic diagram of cloud at a glance. You could at least differentiate little bit. So what a cloud observation consists of in our observatory we have seen after noting down the temp, uh, wind direction estimating the wind speed taking the note of temperatures uh, then non instrumental observation your visibility you have seen the lowest to be reported then you have seen the type of cloud you have to identify now uh, these are the methods for which we have to measure identifying the form of cloud first looking at the cloud irrespective of low medium or high cloud you have to segregate the cloud at one place and see how much amount that is a sky is considered as a whole dome 
under square is divided into eight parts imaginary and each one part is called as octa 1 by 8 so, so we have to see how much part of the sky is occupied by the globes that portion that fraction is denoted by as a n that is n is the total amount of the globes so suppose four octa is occupied that means half of the sky is occupied by the clouds though it is called as four octa estimating its amount so amount uh, here to uh, estimate um, for uh, after that we have to estimate whether it is a low cloud medium cloud high cloud and it's an imaginary estimation and then you have to focus on the low cloud only uh, forget about the medium and high clouds and try to arrange the low clouds at one place if you uh, arrange uh, one place at imagination then how much part of the sky it is occupying according to your estimate this estimation may little bit differ from person to person with one or two octa not more than that it should be estimating the height of the base of the station level so clouds are having uh, some range of heights that they are having usually forming at a particular heights so that height is not daily constant they came sometimes forms a little, little bit down little bit up depending on the height uh, you have to uh, estimate the height of the cloud and report it on the uh, your pocket register for estimating also there is uh, actually visibility and cloud formation cloud identification height estimation needs some practice by virtue of experience uh, the person is able to identify with more accuracy so height could be compared with if there is some any hillock in the near vicinity if you know uh, the height of the hillock some clouds are forming nearby that that at least you can estimate the height of the clouds or another method one singing balloon is being sent uh, in the observatories uh, generally in the monsoon season or best type of season when we see the different type of clouds so the balloon with the known rate of ascent of gas is being sent suppose n meters per second gas is sent and if it uh, released and with the stopwatch the time is noted once it enters the cloud it suppose if it take t time then the height is nt meters so you come to know about the height so and if the instrument if the observatory is having pilot balloon observations so daily they have a range that cloud uh, that balloon enters in the cloud and the last height attended by that ascent gives you the information about the estimated height of the cloud so by virtue of experience and estimating you come to know about the height <coughs> determining the direction of its movement the direction uh, is generally for low cloud status is there but also at some time they are having Excuse me. So direction is not uh, mandatory. If it is there, then and then only you can report it. And for the direction, one instrument called as nephoscope is there. Uh, if it is not in your observatory, the method is that uh, you have to select one corner of the building <coughs> or a pole, and uh, north, south, and east west direction you have to <coughs> you have to see from that. A patch of cloud to be you know, fixed and see the movement where it is moving accordingly to the weather code we have some direction mentioned so that uh, direction required, uh, looking at the best possible code is to be reported the last one is the weather the state of the atmosphere at a particular place time as regards heat cloudiness dryness and wind sunshine is termed as weather so weather is always changing it is not always constant हम लोग बहुत बहुत आज बहुत उमस है आज वेदर सेंट्री है टुडे इज वेदर इज हॉट टुडे वेदर इज विंडी टुडे वेदर इज क्लाउडी सो व्हाट इज दैट रेफरेंस दैट रेफरेंस इज दैट वेदर इज ऑलवेज चेंजिंग वेयर एज क्लाइमेट इज अ लॉन्ग टर्म एवरेज ऑफ वेदर सो दैट इज समवट यूनिफॉर्मिटी बट वेदर जो है हर समय चेंज होते रहता है एंड दैट इज एट एवरी टाइम ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन वेदर पैरामीटर्स आर टू बी नोटेड सो वेदर इज कैटेगराइज्ड इन टू टाइप्स प्रेजेंट वेदर एंड द पास्ट वेदर Present weather usually denoted by the symbol WW and past weather by W1, W2. The phenomena occurring at a station within the site of the observation or during the hour immediately preceding it is termed as present weather. So present weather जो होता है एक घंटे का होता है एक घंटे में जैसे दस मिनट जो होते हैं पहले वो आपके at a time of observation कहलाते हैं and remaining fifty minutes is called as preceding weather. Overall preceding weather plus at a time of observation combinedly gives you the uh, best briefing of present weather that is uh, WW. And whereas the remaining amount of the span of the observation is the past weather. So past weather have different periods that depend upon the odd observation or even observation. Present weather are denoted by the code from 00 to 99, and as per the weather codes, 
the it has been categorized uh, according to the uh, phenomena that is uh, suppose at a time of observation any phenomenon is occurring the code will be different suppose take an example of rain suppose rain is uh, occurring at a time of observation it will have some different code that is 16 so preceding hours if it is in the preceding hours then the code will be 21 the same rain phenomena but where it is occurring in which span accordingly the code will changes so intensity of the precipitation again the changes if it is intermittent rain rook rook ke ho raha hai slight continuous ho raha hai showering ho raha hai accordingly this again the code changes snow agar ho raha hai snowfall snowflakes hai blowing snow hai drifting hai accordingly the code changes if it is thunderstorm dry thunderstorm accompanied with rain then again the code changes so you have to see uh, the, the duty of the observer to note down the weather occurring at that point of observation note it down and at the same time not during the observation but in duty hours it is his duty to keep a note on the weather changing and keep the points noting start and ending of the weather so past weather is denoted by w w2 there are two digit single code best describe the weather phenomena ask me kya weather phenomena hua hai the condition behind is that w1 is always greater than or equal to w2 irrespective of time of occurrence जैसे कि अगर रेन पहले हुआ है तो का कोड छह होता है और अगर थंडर बाद में हुआ है तो उसका कोड नाइन होता है तो एक्चुअली देखा जाए तो डब्ल्यू वन डब्ल्यू शुड बी सिक्स एंड नाइन बट एज पर द रूल्स दो रेन पहले हुआ है टू रिपोर्ट थंडर फर्स्ट देन राइट दट इज प्रायोरिटी इज गिवन टू द टॉप मोस्ट कोड सो नाइन एंड सिक्स विल बी रिपोर्टेड सो जस्ट ए ग्लास एट दिस विद दिस वी आर सपोज टू एंड अवर दिस इज लेक्चर सो वट आई मैं इज दैट पास विद चेंजेस इज हियर ओनली द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस इज दिस वन This is for odd observation, span of observation, or odd span of observation for even. So, for let us take for example odd observation. So, 8:30 that is 3 UTC time of observation. 10 minutes, 8:20 to 8:30 are the 10 minutes. It is called as odd time of observation. This has having the highest score in the weather code. 8:20 to 7:30 that is one hour total. 7:30 is the present weather. This is not the present weather. This 50 minutes are your preceding weather. So, whatever phenomena occurring in this frame of reference will be getting the code of preceding weather and since it is odd observation the span will be of 3 hours only within 3 hours 1 hour is your with uh, present weather 3 minus 1 2 hours remain for past weather whereas for even observation the span is of 6 hours of this 6 hours 1 hour is your present weather and this less span of is 5 hours for your past weather so depending on the time of observation the weather of uh, marks uh, you have to report to weather group 7 w w w w from the description you come to know what was the weather existed at that place any weather phenomena occurring at a station or in near vicinity is impacting the visibility at the station so haze jaisa hota hai aapke station mein haze at a station we generally have a visibility of 5000 meters then if visibility jo bhi weather marks visibility ke uh, impact karte hain wo 5000 meters ke लेस या एटलीस्ट इट शुड रीच द फाइव थाउजेंड विजिबिलिटी मीटर्स होगा तो हेज आप रिपोर्ट कर सकते हैं फॉर मिस द विजिबिलिटी इज मोर देन वन किलोमीटर बट लेस देन थ्री किलोमीटर्स फॉर फॉग एट स्टेशन द विजिबिलिटी इज लेस देन वन किलोमीटर होना चाहिए तभी आप फॉग रिपोर्ट कर सकते हैं डस्टम और साइंस टॉम ऑकर्स ड्यू टू द स्ट्रॉन्ग कंटिन्यूस विंड और स्कॉल रिड्यूसिंग एट दर्जेंटिबिलिटी टू लेस देन वन किलोमीटर तो अंधड़ जो होती है डस्ट टॉम साइंस टॉम जो होता है उससे भी विजिबिलिटी एक किलोमीटर के कम होने से आप उसको रिपोर्ट कर सकते हैं drifting and blowing snow bhi 1 km se kam hona chahiye then you could report it as weather for that and last and foremost point with this we conclude the atmospheric pressure this is the main uh, uh, pressure and that is the this is the only uh, the instrument is barometer this is the only instrument which is housed inside the building while rest of the instruments and the noise instrumental observation are being taken from the observatory so air pressure is another essential element of weather especially when it comes to creating or changing atmospheric condition <clears throat> although it is not visible but air has a weight since it is not empty and filled with the small particles of nitrogen oxygen and various gases weight of the particle of the air creates pressure due to the gravitational force of the earth and since more air envelope is near to the ground the pressure is highest on the planet surface and it decreases as we go with the altitude So this is the multiple uh, picture for barometer in IMD. Q type of barometer being used. The basic principle is that there is a closed system, and inside there is inverted 90 centimeter long U tube, and there are two small vent holes here. 
from this the vertical column of air exchanges the pressure as the pressure is exerted much more the mercury has no uh, place to escape it will rise into the u tube and accordingly the pressure is lower it will fall down so you have to and this mercury the uh, barometer here an attached thermometer is attached you have to note down the reading and similarly here the convex shape mercury is there in the u tube you have to take the main scale reading which is engraved at the uh, frame of this uh, barometer that is a complete reading and the fractional part that is the tenth part of the uh, this is the discount is 0.1 hpa you, you can get the help of vernier uh, scale for that you have to lower down slowly the vernier scale so that it touches at the zero mark line of the vernier scale with the edge of the convex top of the mercury meniscus this is the red mark is the correct sighting this is the wrong sighting sighting low sighting high so you have to lower down the mercury as such just it touches the convex surface just as tangent is like a circle here this is the correct position and at this position uh, you have to see the main scale reading and the vernier this is little bit pressed much more this is sighting low here the gap should not be there this is a wrong method to measure the pressure now here clearly we have mentioned there you could see the scale 980 81 82 83 84 84 is a full one and so 984 hp is a full one in figure b it is 1002 is the full one 1001 1002 now actually 984 it is being mentioned that is it has been clearly 984 is clearly seen but it, the top surface may be between in between 984 and 985 that is the 10th part of it must be coinciding for this one year comes to your help and you could see any one division on the vernier scale is exactly coinciding with the main scale so that amount is to be taken as a part fractional part so here in the first case this uh, ninth division is coinciding with the main scale so the reading is 984.9 whereas here 1002.7 hpa this is a raw reading as some corrections has to be applied for the atmospheric pressure raw reading to reduce it to mean sea level and index correction standard temperature gravity correction and reduction to mean sea level correction so index correction is the correction given by the factory settings or uh, the persons instruments uh, person from the instrument division usually visit the observatory every year to standardize this uh, barometer and uh, this thing all the weather parameter uh, elements uh, instruments so they compare a set of readings with their standard aneroid barometer and took set of readings and they give you the certain correction jaise aapki ghadi aage chal rahi hai piche chal rahi hai accordingly aap correction lagate hain aisa isme bhi hota hai standard temperature and gravity is the correction to reduce the observed pressure to standard temperature of 0 degree celsius as standard gravity of 980.665 cm per second square to obtain true station level pressure ये रिड्यूस करने के बाद आपको स्टेशन लेवल प्रेशर मिलता है जो कि स्टैंडर्ड टेम्परेचर एंड करेक्शन के समय का जो टेबल है वो टेबल ऑलरेडी ऑब्जर्वेटरी में रेडी देखने में दिया रहता है अटैक थर्मामीटर थर्मामीटर रीडिंग के साथ और रीडिंग जो करेक्शन के साथ आप देखेंगे सो यू गेट द करेक्शन फैक्टर सबसे डेट करेक्शन फैक्टर फॉर्म इट यू कम टू नो अबाउट द स्टेशन लेवल प्रेशर हियर इज एग्जाम्पल नाइन इज द रॉ रीडिंग इंडेक्स करेक्शन इज पॉइंट वन प्लस पॉइंट वन बी एडेड टू द standard temperature and gravity correction from the table attack thermometer reading is 24.3 the correction comes to minus 4.3 subtracting this uh, that is removing that uh, thing from that we get station level pressure 946.5 hpa now this station level pressure though we obtained it is of not uh, much more important for globally because we have to when we are analyzing the charts the charts are being analyzed with the mean sea level pressure that is the reference point is sea level the only station level pressure you can't analyze the chart so that why the pressure has to be reduced to mean sea level so for taking it to mean sea level we have what we have to do where uh, as every station has a different height and for sea level uh, the uh, normal standard uh, pressure, uh, pressure 1013.25 millibars hpa is a standard to be taken and what happens that different station have different heights we have to Uh, as we go down, because we have to go to sea level to reduce the pressure. So as we go to sea level, the pressure starts increasing. So the from the table, uh, from diver thermometer, uh, and from the observatory and the station level pressure, you have to compare the readings from the second table, and you get some factor that you have to add. You have to add it because you are going down. You have to add the pressure as the pressure is increasing. 
So the mean sea level pressure is being calculated in such a way. Thank you. So with this, uh, my scope of today's lecture, with little bit uh, focus on why it has been happening, though the parameters we are knowing, but what is the basic reason behind that the earth rotation and revolution and uh, all these things uh, to affect. Uh, that's why I just give a brief explanation for that. I think uh, it's okay. It's, uh, my time is over. Um, I'm very much thankful for the viewers who have patiently seen and observed the things. If I have any uh, other questions, you may ask. If the viewers who are seeing, if you have any questions, you may ask me. Oh, sir, might be uh, there is a no any question from the audience side. Okay, sir. So should so, I conclude, sir? Uh, yes, you can conclude, sir. Thank you. So, uh, so sir, um, so thank you very much, sir. Uh, Rajan, sir, you have very nicely explained the details about the uh, how the weather elements and their observation techniques. I think our viewers uh, will be happy and they will be uh, educated. And I think in the world meteorological uh, day. Your the lecture will be very useful because everything you have covered, which is the observation, observation technique, is the most the important. Is the uh, from most here, since the observation, uh, other factors you can forecast before the forecast, forecast observation is come. So, thank you very much for so sharing your valuable guidance to our viewers. And, uh, 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 and uh, thank you from and the uh, meteorological training institute. Uh, thank you, sir. So now I declare that now my lecture is finished. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you to all viewers and all the uh, persons who are seeing. And happy once again, one W more day.